This is a video about the transformation of graphs. You can see here that I've drawn a graph of y equals f of x. And over on the right I've shown the coordinates of some of the points on this graph. You can see that if x is minus 10, y is equal to 5. If x is minus 5, y is 0. If x is 0, y equals 3. If x is 5, y is 0. And if x is 10, y equals 7. Now what we're interested in is what will happen to the graph if we make a slight change to what we're drawing. If instead of drawing y equals f of x, we draw something slightly different from that, how will that affect the graph? The first thing I'd like to look at is y equals f of x plus 2. What will that graph look like? How will it be different from the original graph that you can see already. OK, so in order to think about this, we need to draw a function diagram. So as always, we start with x. And the first thing that happens to x here is it gets fed into f. After that, whatever comes out of f 2 is added in order to give us the y-coordinate. Now the key thing here is that f hasn't changed. It's still doing the same operations as above. So what that means is that if we make the x-coordinate minus 10, then the output of f is still 5. And if the x-coordinate is minus 5, the output of f is 0, and so on. Exactly the same as before. What's different this time is that after f outputs a number, 2 is added on. So this time the y-coordinate, instead of 5, will be 7. Instead of 0, will be 2. Instead of 3, 5. And so on. OK, now if you compare this with the green picture at the top right, you can see that the x-coordinates are exactly the same as before, but the y-coordinates are all two units more. So if we draw this graph, um, it will look something like this. So you can see that what we've got here is a translation the graph has moved two units up, two units parallel to the y-axis. OK, I'd like to look at a different transformation now. We were looking at y equals f of x plus 2. I now want to look at something that sounds similar, if you read it out but it's actually crucially different. I now want to look at f of x plus 2. OK, so we'll draw the function diagram again. This time things happen in a different order. We start off with x. But this time, the first thing that happens is that we add 2 to x. And it's then that we put the number 
into f in order to get the y-coordinate. Now the key thing is the same as before. f hasn't changed, so if you put the same numbers into f as we did above, the same numbers will come out. That means that if we have minus 10 at this stage, the y-coordinate will end up being 5. And if we have minus 5 at this stage, the y-coordinate will end up being 0, and so on. What we have to ask ourselves, though, is what would the x-coordinate need to be so that we put minus 10 into f? And the answer is that the x-coordinate would need to be minus 12. Likewise, what would the x-coordinate need to be so that minus 5 is put into f? And the answer is minus 7. And you can see that the x-coordinates here are going to have to be minus 2 or 3 or 8. OK, so this time, if we compare the red diagram with the green one, you can see that the y-coordinates are all the same as before. Instead, it's the x-coordinates which have changed. And the x-coordinates are all two less. So let's draw the graph. The graph looks something like this. You can see that again it's a translation, but this time it's a translation in a different direction. The graph has moved two units to the left. And that's something that we really need to pay attention to. It can seem a little surprising because we had f equals x plus 2 but what's happened is that the graph has moved two units in the negative direction. It's moved to the left. Okay, let's move on. I'd like to look at another pair of transformations now. We've just been looking at what happens when we add two different positions. Um, let's look now at what happens if we multiply. So first of all, let's look at y equals twice f of x. Here's the function diagram for that. We start off with x. That gets fed into our function f. And then We double the output of that. And the thinking is quite similar to before. If we start off with the same x coordinates as above, f does the same thing to them. So minus 10 becomes 5, minus 5 becomes 0, 0 becomes 3, 5 becomes 0, and 10 becomes 7. What happens now, though, is that all those numbers get doubled. So eventually, 5 becomes 10, 0 stays as 0, 3 becomes 6, 0 stays as 0, 7 becomes 14. So if we have to draw this graph, it will look something like this. Uh, 
That doesn't quite fit on my picture. OK, so this time what's happened is that the graph has been stretched out parallel to the y-axis. It's a stretch scale factor 2 parallel to the y-axis. OK, let's compare this now with something related. Let's compare that transformation with this one, y equals f of 2x. So again, there's some doubling happening here, but at a different stage. What's this transformation? Well, let's draw the function diagram. We start off with x. This time, the first thing that happens is that it's doubled. The answer is then fed into f, and then we get our y-coordinate. OK, again, always the key thing to remember is that f is still the same thing as above. So if we give f the same inputs, we must get the same outputs. So if we give f an input of minus 10, the output will be 5. If we give f an input of minus 5, the output will be 0, and so on, exactly as before. Now the question is, what must the x-coordinate be so that those are the inputs to f? OK, well, if the input to f is minus 10, then before the doubling operation, we must have had 5. So x needs to be minus 5 in order that minus 10 is the input to f. Again, in order to put minus 5 into f, then the original x-coordinate before the doubling must have been minus 2.5. If, if 5 is fed into f, then the original x-coordinate must be positive 2.5. And if 10 is the input to f, then the original x-coordinate must have been 5. OK, if we compare this with the diagram above, you can see that the y-coordinates are all the same. But this time, the x-coordinates are all half what they used to be. So if we have to draw this picture, it would look like this. Actually, of course, it would carry on. There would be more of it, but we can't tell how it would carry on because there isn't enough of the green graph um, in order to tell. So I'll just leave it like that. OK, so what's happened this time is that it has been squashed parallel to the x-axis. It's been squashed scale factor 2, or if you like, it's been stretched scale factor a half. And as before, that can seem a bit surprising because remember that what we did was we said that we were going to double x. And this doubling has actually resol resulted in a squashing rather than a stretching. But the reason for that, you can see back in our function diagram, you can see that the x-coordinates all needed to be a half of what they were before so that we would have the same input to f. OK, now we've done a couple of these, you might be able to see a little bit of a pattern. You can see that when we made a change to the output from f, like this one where we doubled the output, then we get a transformation parallel to the y-axis. Remember, 
that this one, it ended up being a stretch scale factor 2 parallel to the y-axis. But when we make a change to the input of f, then we get a change parallel to the x-axis. And there's a sense in which it's the opposite of the change that you might have expected. It's what's needed to undo the change that's been made. So, so here x is doubled before feeding it into f and therefore the change is that we need to halve the x coordinates so that the input to f is the same as it was before. Okay, there's one more pair of transformations that I'd like to look at. We need to look at what happens if we have minus signs around. So first of all, we'll have a look at this. y equals minus f of x. What will this graph look like in comparison to the original one? So here's the function diagram for that. First of all, the x-coordinate has made the input to f. And then we take the answer to that, whatever it is, and make it uh, negative. And that gives us the y-coordinate. So same thinking as before. If we make x 10 or minus 10 or minus 5 or 0 or 5, or 10, we'll get the same outputs as before. So if we make the x coordinate minus 10, then f outputs 5. If we make x minus 5, then f outputs 0, and so on. The difference this time is that that number, whatever it is, is then made negative. So 5 turns into minus 5, 3 turns into minus 3, and 7 turns into minus 7. If we have to draw this graph then, it will look something like this. Again, it doesn't quite fit on, but you can see what's happening. This time, the graph is being reflected in the line in the x-axis, in the line y equals zero. So the transformation this time is a reflection in the x-axis. Let's look at one last transformation. Let's look at what happens if we have y equals f of minus x? Again, we'll draw the function diagram. This time things happen in a different order. The first thing that happens is we make the x-coordinate negative. Or we put a minus sign in front of it. Then we feed the answer into f, and finally we get our y-coordinate. Okay, so same thinking as before. If we put the same inputs to f, we get the same outputs. So if we have minus 10 at this stage, we get 5 out. If we have minus 5 at this stage, we get 0 out, and so on. But now we must ask, what would the x-coordinate need to be if minus 10 is fed into f? And the answer is that the x-coordinate would have to be 10. We start with 10, we make it negative, we get minus 10. If minus 5 is meant to be the input to f, then the x-coordinate would need to be 5, and so on. If the input to f is positive 5, then x would need to be minus 5. 
because if we start with minus 5 and we put a minus in front of it, we get minus minus 5, which is the same as positive 5. And if the x coordinate is minus 10, then 10 will be the input to f. OK, you can see that this time the y coordinates haven't changed. The x coordinates have. They're all negative what they were originally. So if we want to draw this graph, it looks something like this. You can see that what's happened this time is a reflection in the y-axis. So, the graph that we drew before was a reflection in the x-axis, and the new graph that we've just drawn is a reflection in the y-axis. Okay, thank you for listening. I hope that's helped you to understand the transformations of graphs.